All right, so in this video, we continue our mechanics and materials sequence, and, and we're doing an example problem for the average normal stress and average shear stress um, of an actually loaded bar. I've got here in this bar 85 pounds being applied through the center of the cross section, and, uh, um, and the cross section has dimensions of one inch by three inches. And uh, um, what I want to do is find the average normal stress sigma, which is uh, we're going to apply that equation, normal force divided by the internal normal force divided by the cross-sectional area that normal force is acting on, and then the average shear stress, which is just V over A as well. Okay, and then what we want to do is find this normal stress and shear stress along a 15-degree slice, okay, 15-degree slice or plane uh, of the structural member and see what those are, okay? And so as you can imagine, one of the first things you need to do is draw a free body diagram. Uh, when you make this cut here, when you make this cut on this plane, you can look at the left side of your diagram or the right. You should get the same result either way. Uh, I'm going to look at the right side because, you know, for me, I'm not a great artist or anything. And so it's easier for me to just draw the right side and see that in, in 3D because then I get to see the whole surface. Whereas if I look to the left side, you know, that surface looks a little hidden. But it, whatever, okay? And the other thing that's really important is that when you make that cut, you have to draw or you have to write out what the internal – you know, the internal loads are on the inside of that once inside of the member after you cut it. And so here in, in this in this case here, I have a normal force. Bam. I have a normal force on the inside, which I will draw perpendicular. Now, I'll assume that it's positive, causing tension on this face, on this blue area or the cut, the plane of the cut. And then I'm going to have a shear force. And I'm also going to assume that it's, it's just moving to the right here. Um, and cause and the shear force here v is going to the right upwards if you will in the upward sense okay i could draw a moment here as well i could draw a moment like this here but if once i do, because everything is concentrically loaded this p acts through the center right here um this this moment there, there is going to be no moment induced on this okay which, which also means that i have no moment equation that i can apply Trying to erase this, got to get rid of that. So forget this moment. There's no need for it. Okay, so that moment would be zero if I apply an equilibrium equation. And, and so now I have this, you know, this internal loading, and I only have two internal loads: the normal force and the shear, which I have to calculate using da, 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 equilibrium equations. All right. So equilibrium equations to calculate internal loads. Something you've been doing since, who knows? Maybe physics. Okay. But here. Um, you have a couple choices here. A lot of times people might just do some, you know, X is positive horizontal straight across and vertical is positive Y and some forces in the vertical and the horizontal. And what that's going to do, if you just go straight across for the horizontal, you know what you're going to have is you can have two equations and they're going to be coupled equations, meaning that I'm going to have, when I do, if I do some of the forces in the horizontal, I'm going to have N and V appear in that horizontal equation. So here, let's let's see what that would look like. I'd have this. Um, so I'd have here if I just did say, say some of the forces, in the x equal to zero, and I said horizontal here like this. I might have v cosine of fifteen degrees minus n sine of fifteen degrees uh, plus eighty five pounds equals zero, and then. And so essentially what you're going to see is some of the forces in the y equal to zero, and I would have v sine of 15 degrees. If I say this is positive, v sine of 15 degrees minus plus n cosine of 15 degrees uh, equals zero. And I have two equations, two unknowns, I can solve it, right? The other thing you could do, though, is, I, you know, this is one option where you have just straight across horizontal and vertical. Another option is to say here, I'm going to call this plus x and i'm going to call this parallel to my normal force plus y right here and if i do that when i do some of the forces in the x equal to zero and x will be this way positive right here so this is anyway right here i have v and then i have again let's here break this up we're going to have this here that'll be x so i will have here this P, will, I'll have a PX component and a PY component right here. This is, I'm just breaking up a vector, okay, into an X and Y components right here. So here I'd have V, V 
my plus p cosine of 15 degrees this is my px okay equals to zero and then i have if i do some of the forces in the y equal to zero and this would be the positive y there i'd have n minus p sine of 15 degrees equals zero and this as you probably gathered is py right there and so here if you look at this right here if i if i stick with the straight horizontal and vertical as i'm used to or you might be used to right here i get two coupled equations right so i have to solve two equations to unknowns whereas here if i use if i just change my my axes my x and y to be to coincide with the shear and the normal force then i have two equations two unknowns i don't have to worry you know it's, it's but it's real simple right and, and I get right away that this, you know, this P is 85 pounds, just in case you didn't know that this number should be 85 pounds, and that is 85 pounds. So when I solve this out, I would get that V is equal to a negative 82.10 pounds. And that negative just means it's 82.10 pounds, not in the direction that I drew it. It actually goes this way is my direction, and my normal force is positive. Um, 22.0 pounds which indicates that my normal force is 22.0 pounds in the direction that i drew it this way right here okay so those are my my internal uh, shear and normal forces acting on this cut at 15 degrees in this blue zone i'm gonna now the next thing that we need to do to just you know is apply these equations here apply these constitutive equations for for shear stress and and normal stress but what we need is the area that we're acting on and so probably the trick in this problem or the challenging aspect of it is is to accurately determine so we want to apply equations here is our next step here but we need some geometric properties in term, particularly this blue zone which i'm going to call a star okay and if you if you look here if you remember this this width right here is uh, um is one inch and the original area which i will look at this the original cross-sectional area this area is length times the width which is three inches times one inch which was three inches squared okay and and here in the blue area my 15 degree cut my width does not change i think you will agree with me on that this width right here is still one inch but i have a new length right here and that would be l star Okay, and that makes my area, my new area, equal to uh, L star times W. Okay, so what is L star? L star, if I have here, if I know that this vertical height is 3 inches and my angle is 15 degrees, aha, you know, I just know that based on sine, sine of 15 degrees is equal to the opposite, 3 inches over the adjacent, which is, L over the hypotenuse, which is L star, okay, or, or, uh, let me, oh, no, don't crash on me, okay, All right here, this, let's just make this, let's say, the original length over L star right here, so that makes L star equal to L over sine of 15 degrees, and if I plug that into here, that tells me A star is just length times width divided by sine of 15 degrees, which was really just three inches squared divided by the sine of 15 degrees. And that is this A star, if I run through the, some calculations, is 11.59 inches squared. And, and just to finish it all out, to calculate at last, applying the, these relationships. So the normal stress sigma N divided by A star is equal to um what 22 pounds divided by 11.59 inches squared which is 1.90 psi or pounds per square inch and tau which is v over a star and that was 82.10 pounds divided by 11.59 inches squared is 7.08 psi and that is it Oh, I apologize if I was a little wordy at the beginning. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it, and maybe I'll do something a little bit more difficult next time. All right, enjoy.
Bye.